Florida State University Tiger basketball. The fast-paced, action-filled, thrilling Tiger basketball game we enjoy today all began in 1912. On Tuesday morning, September 10, 1912, the West Tennessee State Normal School opened its doors to approximately 200 students. President Seymour A. Minders announced that Clyde H. Wilson, former director of athletics at Eastern Kentucky State Normal School, had been appointed physical training director, the Tigers' first coach. President Minders accompanied the announcement of Coach Wilson's appointment with the statement that, quote, athletics are to be a strong feature of the school. This early attitude has prevailed through the years. In 1913, cheerleading squads were organized. School colors of blue and gray were selected. The Tiger was chosen as mascot. For over 80 years, basketball has been a part of campus life, and as time passed, that student activity became a tradition in Memphis. This tradition grows stronger with each basketball season, as the Memphis State Tigers garner awards and postseason NCAA tournament victories. In the 1920s, West Tennessee State Normal School played their games in the Normal Cage, the YMCA, or the Messick High School Gym. Now, the Normal Cage was a room in the administration building with the floor marked with the dimensions of a basketball court. This first basketball court allowed barely six inches between the sidelines to the walls of the room. These early arenas are a far cry from the Fieldhouse, the Coliseum, and the fabulous Pyramid. The coaches of the Normal Tigers in the early days were Frederick Grantham during the 1920-21 season. Grantham was also a starting forward and captain of the team. Boy, things sure are different today. As the school yearbook, the DeSoto noted, to this excellent squad of basketball tossers goes the honor of having won 23 out of 30 games played. W.H. DePriest was the coach for the 1921-22 season. This team of Tigers competed against such area squads as the Tiptonville Bulldogs, the UT Doctors, and Arkansas A&M. The normal Tigers were 1-7. Coach Lester Barnard coached for two seasons from 1922 to 1924. His team played area teams such as Ole Miss, Union, and Mississippi College. The normal Tigers beat Ole Miss in 1922 down at Ole Miss 16-14. Many of the players on these early Tiger teams also played football. Some of the top players for Coach Barnard were Herman Slick Heaton and captain of the team, John Barnhill. John Barnhill was later the coach and athletic director at the University of Arkansas. The 1924 season was to be the first for Coach Zach Curlin. Coach Curlin would coach basketball, baseball, and football for 23 years at West Tennessee State Normal School and later at Memphis State College. Coach Curlin was also director of athletics and physical education. Zach Curlin was a 1913 graduate of Vanderbilt University, and he was known as one of the best football players in the South. See him pictured here with the 1925 team wearing his Vandy letter sweater. Coach Curlin received his law degree from Memphis University Law School in 1919. He coached Tiger basketball from 1924 to 1948. Pictured here is the 1924-25 team, which included Boswell Hale, Marion Davis, and Rufus Crenshaw. In the early 20s, the Normal Tigers played in the Mississippi Valley Conference. Some of the players who played on Coach Curlin's teams in the 20s were Dub Jones, Gene Fulgham, Rabbit Evans, Bob Donnell, Ed Thompson, and Floyd Dutch Deachin. The West Tennessee State Normal Tigers began the 1929 season in the new on-campus Memorial Gym. The 1929-30 Tigers finished second in the Mississippi Valley Conference with a 16-8 record. Three Tigers placed on the All-Mississippi Valley team. Coach Curlin is pictured with a dog in this team photo. The 1930-31 Tiger basketball team was built around veterans Dodd and Ed Thompson. Losing only one regular season game, Coach Curlin's Tigers were 14-2. The 1931-32 Tiger basketball team found themselves followed by an unelected mascot named Jinx. Pictured here is Coach Curlin's 1932-33 team. Notice the snake senior Doc Howell's holding. This team of 1933-34 Tigers went to the semifinals of the Mississippi Valley Conference. Coach Curlin's 35-36 team was laced with sophomores as four made the team. It was called, quote, not the best season in school history. The 1936-37 team posted victories over Middle Tennessee State, Delta State, but had a losing season overall. The 1937-38 Tiger team holds the dubious distinction of losing all 14 games it played. 
Coach Curlin's 1938-39 team improved somewhat over the previous year and even avenged an earlier loss to Arkansas State in Jonesboro, according to one account, quote, by beating their ears down in Memphis. The 39-40 team claimed the city championship with two victories over arch-rival Southwestern. Some of the outstanding players for the Tigers in the 30s were Sam Heinzman, Milton Mayo, Burt Barnes, Doc Howell, Clyde Moore, Mooney Boswell, Red Humphreys, Jack Dodds, James Stroop, Elmer Vaughn, Otha Lynch, James J.T. Crawford, Alton Gardner, and Wesley Halp. In 1941, West Tennessee Normal College became Memphis State College. The Memphis State Cagers played under coach Zach Curlin as the Memphis State Tigers for the first time. The Tigers won 9 of 17 games and claimed the city championship by defeating Southwestern twice. The 1940-41 Tigers also lost to the Boston Celtic World Champions. Leslie Steele, a star forward for the team, averaged 13 and a half points a game. The 1941-42 season featured a 72-41 victory over Southwestern, with Steele scoring a record 42 points. 1943-1944, World War II. There was no team due to the war. Not only was the year 1943-44 affected, but the 44-45 team was made up largely of freshmen under the age of 18. Birthdays rolled around and two of the starters received presidential draft greetings. The 1945-46 Tigers had a 7-4 record with three victories over arch-rival Southwestern. Tigers center Howard Street scored 121 points in 12 games. Coach Curlin's squads of 1946 and 47 won 11 and lost 7. Leslie Steele was back playing center. The 1947-48 season would be Curlin's last as head coach of the Tigers. In his final season, the Tigers won 13 and lost 10. The team won two of three games played against Southwestern. Coach Zach Curlin had led Memphis State through 23 seasons. McCoy Terry became the fifth Tiger head coach in 1948. Coach Terry, known as the Little Redhead, came to Memphis State from Brewers High School in Brewers, Kentucky, where his teams had won the state championship for the past two years. Featuring four starting freshmen, Coach Terry's team finished 11 and 10. Due to large crowds, two games during the 49-50 season had to be played at Messick High School Gym and at the Shelby County Building. A new facet of Terry's strategy was the use of five guards at the same time. The Tigers were 12 and 9 that season. Some of the outstanding players of the 40s were Leslie Steele, Sam Heinzman, Howard Street, E.L. Hutton, Wayne Franklin, Randall Smith, Coy Creason, Phil Hodson, Jack Graninger, Benny Reed, and Van Mathis. The 1950-51 Tiger team had a 13 and 7 record and went all the way to the quarterfinal round of the NAIB tournament in Kansas City, thanks to the strong play of Phil Hodson and Coy Creason. The 1951-52 season would be the first of five great years for coach Dr. Eugene Lambert. In the 1950s, Memphis State basketball had grown into a household word. Coach Lambert would lead the Tigers to their first ever NCAA appearance in 1955. Going into the first round with a 17-4 record, the Tigers were matched against Penn State in Lexington, Kentucky. Penn State won that game 59-55. The 1955-56 Lambert coach team had a 20-7 record, which again gained MSU another spot in the NCAA tournament in Wichita, Kansas. The Tigers fell to Oklahoma City in the first round. The Tigers, though, were forced to play without four starters because of NCAA rules on freshmen and four-year men. Pictured here are the teams coached by Dr. Eugene Lambert, 1951-52, 1952-53, 1954-55, Coach Lambert would also be the coach of the first All-American at Memphis State, Forrest Arnold. Arnold ranks fourth on the all-time scoring record with 1,854 points in only 95 games. One highlight of his sterling career was a 46-point effort against Hardin Simmons in the Old Fieldhouse. Larry Finch's 48 points against St. Joseph's in 1973 finally broke Forrest Arnold's record. Some of the great players who would help put then Memphis State College on the basketball map were John Willissa, Jack Butcher, Phil Hodson, Joe Nip McKnight, Dick Kinder. He once scored 44 points against Marshall in 53. Ken Caldwell, 
Bill McLean, Hoover Scott, Bob Swander, Elmore Fortner, Spud Hayes, Wynn Wilfong, Jim Hockaday, and Orby Arnold. 1957 would be a landmark year for Memphis State University. Not only would Memphis State College become Memphis State University, but first year coach Bob Bonetta took a Cinderella team to the finals of the NIT in New York City. Wynn Wilfong accepts the runner-up trophy in the 1957 NIT tournament from the tourney chairman. The name Memphis State took on a new meaning across the country. Coach Venata came to Memphis State after a tenure as athletic director at Bradley. During his six seasons at MSU, Coach Venata's teams would win 109 games against just 34 losses. Under Venata, the Tigers not only finished second in the NIT in 1957, his teams of 59-60 and 60-61 also made appearances in the National Invitational Tournament. The 61-62 team also received a bid to the NCAA tourney in Dallas. The 1957 season was the last for team captain and record-setting forward Wynn Wilfong. In two seasons, he scored 1,203 points to place him 15th on the all-time scoring record list. Win Wilfong rewrote several records and will always be remembered for the way he played in a Tiger uniform. Many talented players made these years, years that Tiger fans still remember and talk about. Some of those outstanding players were Jack Butcher, Orby Arnold, James Hockaday, Lowry Kirk, George Price, Hoover Scott, Bob Swander, Skip Wolf, Spud Hayes, Frank Snyder, Larry Garber, Gene Wilfong, and Wayne Yates, who would later coach from 1974 to 79. Coach Venata would accept the head coaching position at the University of Missouri in 1962. Dean Ellers, a longtime assistant of Venata's, would be named the Tigers' eighth head coach. In his first year, the Tigers were 19-7, and received a bid to the NIT at Madison Square Garden in New York. The Tigers were led by Larry Garber, Jamie McMahon, Hunter Beckman, career points 1,007, John Hillman, career points 1,009. Bob Newman, career points 1,117. And King George Kirk. Here the Tigers play against Fordham, March 14th in the 63 NIT. The Tigers would go on to defeat Fordham 70 to 49, advancing to the second round playing Kinesis. The Tigers would fall, though, 76 to 67. from the 1963 MSU Dayton game shows a packed field house. In fact, the fire marshal stopped the game for several minutes to clear the aisle. Big Jack Eaton, at the time the voice of the Tigers, was at a loss for words or interviews to fill the interrupted broadcast of the game. He finally resorted to singing. Big Jack was the voice of the Tigers from 1959 to 1987. Notice the heated action the Dayton Flyers, Gordy Hatton, and George Kirk get into. The Tigers won this game 61 to 59. During the early 1960s, it was decided that the city of Memphis needed a new coliseum and that Memphis State needed a new facility to showcase its basketball program. Construction started on the Mid-South Coliseum, and in November of 1964, the 11,200-seat arena opened. 
The Tigers hosted Texas A&M in the first collegiate game ever played in the building and defeated the Aggies 82-73 before 8,763 delighted Memphis State fans. The home court advantage was set. Dean Ellers, who now serves as the athletic director at James Madison University in Virginia, was the Tigers' head coach during the 1964-65 season. It was Ellers' team that defeated Texas A&M in that inaugural game in the Mid-South Coliseum, led by Tim Morgan, John Hillman, Bob Niebruger, Alan Miralis, John Snyder, and Jamie McMain. The Tigers would post wins over such teams as Alabama, Pepperdine, second-ranked Oklahoma City, Florida State, Dayton, and New Orleans in the first two years in the Coliseum and set the stage for years to come. The mid-1960s found Mo Iba directing the Tiger basketball fortunes. Coach Iba's first year at MSU saw the Tigers finish with a 17-9 overall record, which earned the Tigers a bid to the 1967 NIT in New York City's Madison Square Garden. As members of that NIT squad remember being compared to the 1957 NIT team, which finished second in the tournament just 10 years before. That was the last NIT to be played in the old Madison Square Garden. These are just some of the players in the mid and late 60s who made it all happen. Mike Butler, career points, 1,409. Chuck Neal. Mike O'Dell. Mackie Don Smith. Mike Stewart. Alan Miralee. B.G. Petty. Jimmy Hawkins. Craig Alexander. Dave Luce. Paul Mann, John Gay, Rich Jones, James Douglas, career points 1,143, Joe Proctor, Pat Beveridge. The 70s brought a new coach and more fame and glory to the rich Memphis State basketball tradition. Gene Bartow became the Tigers head coach in 1970 and immediately set about molding experienced players like James Douglas, Don Holcomb and Fred Horton with two young Tigers, Larry Finch and Ronnie Robinson. The outcome was an 18-8 record which included wins over Nevada, Las Vegas, Bradley, Louisville, St. Louis and Tulsa. The 1971 Louisville win marked the first time in nine years that MSU had defeated the Cardinals. Missouri Valley Conference sophomore of the year, Finch and all Missouri Valley Conference teammate Ronnie Robinson returned in 1972 and again joined forces with Holcomb, Horton, Doug McKinney, Bob Foxworth, and point guard Bill Laurie 
to lead the Tigers to a 24 and 6 record including a 12 and 2 conference mark. Wins over Ole Miss, Arkansas, LSU, and Louisville, both at home and at Freedom Hall, along with Bradley and St. Louis, highlighted a season that found the Tigers tying for the Missouri Valley Conference title and forcing a playoff with Louisville and Nashville, Tennessee. After a hard-fought loss to the Cardinals, the Tigers accepted a bid to the NIT to face Oral Roberts. and fans were waiting when the Tigers took the court in Louisville's Freedom Hall on February 2nd. It was a place where Memphis State had never seen victory. The Tigers were within reach of a share of a conference lead. They came to win. Steady scoring by Finch and Robinson. The big cat Robinson showed why he was the team's leading rebounder turning this missed shot into two points. Horton steals the ball for a layup. Finch scores two. Maury to Finch for two. Maury for two from 21 feet. The Tigers bring home a 77 to 69 victory. There are many reasons why the 1971-72 season went so well. We can never forget the play of Don Holcomb and Fred Horton, our two fine seniors. Of course, Larry Finch and Ronnie Robinson uh, both gained all league honors again and are being billed as future All-Americans. We had great play from Bill Laurie and Doug McKinney and Jerry Tetzloff and Kenny Andrews and Bob Foxworth and Steve Christ. All this had to go into the fact that we were a great basketball team in 1971-72. Perhaps the most remembered season in Tiger basketball history, the season that put Memphis State on the basketball map permanently, was the 1972-73 campaign. Led by Finch, Robinson, Laurie, and newcomers Larry Keenan, Billy Buford, West Westfall, and Bill Cook, the Tigers reeled off 14 straight wins during the winter of 73, captured the Missouri Valley title, and received the team's first bid to the NCAA tournament since the 1962 season. Playing in the regional finals in Houston, Texas, the Tigers knocked off South Carolina and Kansas State to advance to the Final Four for the first time in MSU history. Providence fell to MSU in the semifinals, and suddenly Gene Bartow's squad found itself facing the Bruins of UCLA, led by All-American Bill Walden. An uncanny shot by Walden. This is just one of Walden's quick moves. Keenan shoots a hook over Walden. It's good. Finch ties it at eight. Jump shot. Finch for two. Robinson spinning jumper for two.
Walton's fifth basket of the half. Finch pops for two. Walton's turnaround bank shot. He hits everything. Another hook by Walton. It's good. Finch hits a 20-footer. Walton couldn't slam because of the no dunking rule. Ref says he dunked. Basket taken away. Walton for goaltending. Finch hangs. Double clutches for the jumper. Finch shot is up and good. Robinson's jumper is up and good. Ties the score at 39-39. it in. The alley-oop to Walton. 30 points for the big guy. Freshman Bill Cook hits two. Keenan with the jump hook. Walton fouls it. That's four on Walton. Finch is fouled before the shot. Haskins, no good. Walton's down. But Finch helps the big redhead to the bench. The season's over. The final score, 87 to 66. Larry Finch, with the nickname of Little Chubby, all but rewrote the MSU record book in 73, claiming nine of 13 individual records. During his career at MSU, the six foot two inch guard was named to the All Missouri Valley Conference team three times. Selected to appear in five All Star games after the 73 season. His sportsmanship on the court and his community involvement off the court combined to make him one of the best loved players to ever wear the Tiger jersey. Larry Finch, career points 1,869. Ronnie Robinson, some call him the Big Cat. Robinson proved to be a bona fide basketball star for the Tigers. He surpassed the 1,000 mark in both career points and rebounds. He holds the single game rebounding record with 28. Gene Barto left Memphis State after the 1974 season. Former Tiger All-American Wayne Yates was hired to guide the basketball team. Yates had served as an assistant coach under Barto and had a first-hand knowledge of the talent-laden Tiger team. Yates inherited many outstanding players to fill his first team, a team that would finish the 1975 season with a record of 20 and 7. During the next five years, the roster read like a who's who of basketball at MSU. Bill Cook, Dexter Reed, John Gunn, Marion Hillard, Clarence Jones, John Washington, Alvin Wright, James Bradley, Dennis Isbell, Hank McDowell, Otis Jackson would lead Memphis State to numerous wins and bids to one NCAA tournament and two NITs. to read career points 1,676.
James Bradley, career points, 1,254. Career points, 1,629. Wayne Yates left MSU after the 79 season, and Dana Kirk was hired to direct the Tiger basketball fortunes. Kirk brought two young assistants with him to help structure the basketball program. Those two young coaches were Larry Finch and Lee Fowler, starting with a base of players that included Jackson, Jeff Battle, Derek Phillips, McDowell, and Isbell. The Tigers would build a dynasty that would dominate college basketball during the 1980s. In 1982, MSU signed a 6'11 basketball phenom from West Memphis, Arkansas, who would rewrite the Tiger basketball record book. Keith Lee, who had led West Memphis High School to two undefeated seasons, made an immediate impact on Memphis State basketball. Joining forces with Andre Turner, Bobby Parks, Philip Haynes, Derek Phillips, Baskerville Holmes, and John Albright, the Tigers won 24 games, captured the Metro Conference Championship, and advanced to the NCAA Tournament. MSU defeated Wake Forest in the opening round lost in overtime to Villanova. <laughs> Philip Doom Haynes, career points, 1,479. season found the Tigers winning 23 games and advancing to the NCAA regional in Louisville, Kentucky. Memphis State's first game was against the Georgetown Hoyas and pitted Keith Lee against Patrick Ewing. With Lee providing the offensive punch and Derek Phillips the defensive effort, the Tigers stopped Georgetown 66-57 and moved on to Kansas City, Missouri and the regional finals. MSU was paired against the number one team in the nation, the Houston Cougars. Led by Akeem Olajuwon, the Cougars won a 70-63 contest to end the Tigers' season. Andre Turner, career points, 1,442. Baskerville Holmes, career points, 1,112.
start of the 1984 campaign, the Tigers had added players like William Bedford and Willie Beckton to the roster. Along with Lee, Parks, and Haynes, MSU produced a 24-5 record and a Metro Conference championship en route to an NCAA bid. The Mid-South Coliseum was chosen as a host site. The Tigers were paired against Oral Roberts in the opening round. After a 92-83 win over the Titans, Memphis State took on the top seed Purdue and knocked off the Boilermaker 66-48 before a packed house of hysterical fans. As in 1983, the Tigers were again paired against the University of Houston. Once again, the Cougars ended Memphis State's season with a 78-71 victory in St. Louis. Newcomers John Wilfong and Vincent Askew helping MSU jump to a 25-2 record by February. And after the Tigers swept through the Metro Conference Tournament, MSU was sent to Houston, Texas for the first round of the NCAA. Memphis State stopped the University of Pennsylvania and Alabama Birmingham to advance on to Dallas, Texas for the regional final. And after victories there against Boston College in Oklahoma, the Tigers found themselves heading for Lexington, Kentucky for the Final Four. The MSU-5 drew Villanova in the semifinals and lost a 52-45 contest to the eventual national champs. In 1986-87, the season of miracles. No one expected them to win the Metro. MSU was on NCAA probation. Three key players were lost to graduation and the NBA. Dana Kirk was no longer the coach. The Tigers had a rookie coach at the helm, Larry Finch. But the Tigers awarded that rookie coach with a 26-8 record. With MSU on NCAA probation, Metro Conference officials took a vote whether they should let Memphis State go to the Metro tourney. The vote was unanimous. The Tigers would go to the Metro, much to the chagrin of Louisville coach Denny Crum. I don't think anyone should be in the Metro tournament if they're on probation, said Crum. After beating Cincinnati and South Carolina, the Tigers made the two previous wins over arch rival Louisville seem mild. And the Tigers rolled to a 75-52 win in the final, winning the Metro Conference.
Larry Finch's second year as head coach should be called Heartstoppers 2. Once again, there was controversy. Sylvester Gray, the Metro Freshman of the Year the previous season, and Marvin Alexander were ruled ineligible. The Tigers finished with a 20-12 record and were runners-up in the Metro Conference Tournament and received a bid to the NCAA. A freshman by the name of Elliot Perry would make his mark on the Memphis basketball scene. Other outstanding players were Cheyenne Gibson, John McLaughlin, Ronald McLean, Brett Munn. This group of Tigers were truly the cardiac kids, winning three games in overtime and playing every game close. season. The wonderful world of Hawaii provides the setting for the start of the Tigers 1988-89 season. Memphis State was part of the 18 field in the Maui Classic. Yes, these are Hawaiian shirts. Quickness was a serious threat to opponents. second victory at New Orleans ignited the spark that would scorch opponents for 11 of the next 12 games, including a pair of wins over top-ranked Florida State. Highlights was an unbelievable 24 to nothing run against Louisville at Freedom Hall.
over Southern Miss, then traveled to Blacksburg for a date with Virginia Tech. A victory to give the Tigers a Metro crown, but it just wasn't to be. Next game, the Metro turning, then a third game against the Cardinals of Louisville. A one-point loss dampened Tigers' spirit, but the next day's NCAA pairings proved rewarding. Memphis State was off to Boise, Idaho, with a number five seed in the West Regional, the opponent to be DePaul. Playing on national TV, the Blue Demons ended Memphis State's season. The Tigers didn't come away from the 21-11 and 11 season empty-handed. Larry Finch was named Metro Conference Coach of the Year, the second time that he's been selected in three years as head coach. Guard Elliott Perry received a Metro Player of the Week award during the season, was voted to the All-Metro First Team, and received honorable mention on the Associated Press All-America team. The season that started on the beaches of Hawaii came to a close in the mountains of Idaho. Yes, the Coliseum era has passed, and Tiger basketball has grown into something much larger. After winning approximately 80% of all its games in the Mid-South Coliseum over the past 26 years, Memphis State basketball will move to the Great American Pyramid in 1992, and a new era of greatness will begin. The Tigers begin play in the Great Midwest Conference and roar into the pyramid, the Tomb of Doom. The 1991-92 season. Cincinnati, though, would be the thorn in the Tiger's paw, beating Memphis State four times during the season, including one time in the NCAA tournament. Tigers would again host a 20-plus win season with a berth in the NCAA, going all the way to the Midwest Regional Finals.
highlights of the 91-92 season would be two victories over Arkansas, once at the Pyramid and once in the NCAA Tourney. up to his billing as everybody's all Mr. Everything, winning several postseason honors, including conference MVP. David Vaughn would also be a scoring and rebounding threat on this talent-laden team. This team of Tigers was too legit to quit. The rich Tiger basketball tradition continues to grow with each new season. The great talented players provide exciting thrills for all Tiger fans to remember for years to come. Built on this legacy, this tradition will go on for many, many years.